Academy researchers study various organisms, from birds to mammals, fish to invertebrates, and insects to microbes. Stan Bloom is a little different. He helps the researchers manage the data about all the organisms they collect. The field is called biodiversity informatics. All of the information about life on Earth, the core of biodiversity informatics is really about the organismal level and how many different kinds of organisms there are, and what are they, how are they related. I tend to think of this as museums being right at the, the center of that. For astronomers, telescopes are the way they study the universe, and for biodiversity scientists, museum collections are, are one of the most important ways that they study life on Earth. The Academy's collections are at the root of all our researchers' work here, including Stan's. The researchers here at the Academy, everybody who studies biodiversity goes into the field and collects organisms in nature and brings them back. And museums end up being the primary, what we call, research resource. They collect little bits and pieces and constantly adding to it, but the collection grows over time to be this huge resource. It basically documents life on Earth. Scientists from all over the world use these collections to determine how species are related and what lives where, and how those habitats are changing. Stan takes those collections and makes them available digitally so anyone can access them anywhere. All of this life on Earth documentation that we have in our collections becomes a biological data set. So we can look at all of those data and plot distributions of organisms and understand the, the change of distributions over space and over time because all of those specimens have what is it, where did it come from, when was it collected, who collected it, all the rest of the, the details that go along with it. It all builds from, from that primary data, point by point by point, you know, description by description, up into, you know, story of how this group evolved, how this community is different from another one, etc. With 28 million specimens, the Academy's collections are huge, and of course, no specimen is left behind. If it's worth keeping, then it's worth digitizing. Typically for all the vertebrates, so mammals, birds, reptiles and amphibians, and fishes, all of our collections here in the Academy are virtually completely done, so 100%. When it comes to some of the the, the invertebrates and, the, and you know, the insects and, and plants, we still have a ways to go. We have a lot of work. And the work is essential. If you know what lives where, if you have all of that information available to you, you can start to plan, okay, how, how can I construct a system of protected areas such that I encompass most of the diversity? I think our best plans for conservation efforts need to be based on as much information as we can bring to the table.